we're back with an all new show. It's just me and Damage today because Blue is not feeling well. Maybe she went back on the date with the underwear guy. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> people in the comments just they can't believe blue's uh, da- uh dating uh story but anyway i hope she's getting well look there's just so much going on you know it's the end of the year and everybody is out for the holidays uh i just want to send a shout out real quick to my family uh who lost a uh, aunt of mine eliza she fell down the stairs and broke her neck i did not know how many people literally fall down the stairs and die it's just like a freak accident that i thought was random but she was 65 years old and so i'm going home for the funeral but you know there's so many people damaged that have lost family members over the last couple years and i feel like with COVID, i don't know if it's because we're in the house and we're locked into social media and we're looking at all the updates as people are giving them but it seems like there's just been so many people dying that i just want to say not only to my family but everybody out there who's lost anybody that i, I just pray that You know, you're getting through it. My family is doing well, uh, as well as to be expected. This is the third aunt of mine in a year that's died. One of my aunts died of um, cancer. Another aunt died of COVID. And then my sister died of COVID late last year. So our family's been going through a lot, but we are definitely pulling through. But Damage, have you lost anybody this year? Or have you seen a lot of death around you like I have? Oh, man. First of all, Jason, I'm sorry to hear all that. You kind of running it down like it's nothing, but that's a lot to unpack right there. So, you know, definitely sending condolences to your family. Uh, personally, I haven't lost anyone, but I've definitely seen a lot of a lot of death, man. Um, one of my good friends just lost his mom um, about a month or two ago, and that hit him really hard. And I feel like the past two years, we've been seeing a lot of death, um, whether it's from COVID or anything else, um, whether it's gun violence, because, you know, I'm from Philly. I lost a lot of friends over the past three years to gun violence. So there's definitely been a lot of death impacted me, but um, I'm fortunate to say none of my family, but my prayers go out to everybody out there because these past few years has been very, very rough when it comes to that, man. So if you lost a loved one, there's no people here at Hollywood Unlocked. We got you in our prayers and we showing y'all some support. Yeah. And, you know, death has always been a weird thing for me because we know it's going to happen. It's that we don't know when it's going to happen or how it's going to happen that drives us crazy. And then the people around us, you know, I think we take for granted the time that we have to share with them. I haven't seen my Aunt Liza in years. Her daughter, though, Anitra, is the one who counseled me when I was going to the hospital to have surgery for the weight loss. She's also uh, has power of attorney over my medical life. You know, if anything was to happen to me and she's somebody that helps the family just today, she posted on Facebook that one of our cousin's son, who's 23 years old, is fighting for his life in the hospital because of COVID. So she's actually in the middle of planning her mother's funeral, arranging his care at the hospital. So there's a lot going on. But I will say that the one thing that I I tell everybody is that, you know, the things that we cannot control, we have to figure out how to cope with. You can't control death. It's done. So you do have to figure out ways of coping with it, but not press, you know, pushing it down to where you don't deal with it. But you know, I've I've had to figure out ways of coping with that. And I mean, I'm doing well. I also want to say that, you know, I got two dogs recently that I shared on my show gagging last night, <laughs> Gucci and Chanel. Uh, the dogs have brought a certain level of joy. Well, the one that I've gotten, the other one gets here on Friday. But, you know, having that new energy in the house, having something to take care of, uh, something else that's breathing besides me. Uh, and something that loves me unconditionally, the way it looks at me, you know, you, you can't do nothing but give it everything it wants. So I gave it to boarding school because it peed in my house. And I'm going to tell you, you know, the first floor of my house right now smells like a kennel. So I've had to order these scent things where I'm going to put scent machines everywhere. So ma- no matter where you walk in this house, you will smell something other than dog. <laughs> okay. Um, but why, why don't you have a pet? Are you not a pet person? Because I have a child. I don't got time to be taking dogs on walks at 2 in the morning and all that. They tearing shit up at the house. Jason, I was really surprised to see that you out of all people got a dog in that beautiful home you got. That's when we really learned you something. Dogs are crazy. They pee everywhere. They shit everywhere. I'm, I was really surprised that you out of all people got a dog. I can see you just getting mad at that dog. I know you're going to love it. But dogs oh. are a lot sometimes. Oh, I've already gotten mad at the dog. That's why the dog is not here for the next four <laughs> weeks. The dog is in boarding school. He is being, she's being trained. And the other one, when it lands, it lands at 11, 11 on Friday. By 12, 11, it's going to be with Chanel being trained at wherever Chanel is. No, I mean, look, here's the deal, right? 
I, I, I go back and forth on whether I should have a kid. I'm like, let me go ahead and get a dog or two first. If I get two dogs and can survive two dogs, I can survive one kid. That's my method of thinking. Plus, Tiffany Addish kind of like tricked me into getting the damn dog because she's like, I got a dog on the way and she has a sister. And I'm like, well, I might as well get that dog too. <laughs> so I was already kind of thinking about it, but the dog is so cute. I was telling everybody uh, that when I was online the other day that I tried to escape the dog for like 15 minutes, 20 minutes. I wanted to go take a shower. The dog literally got in the shower mm -hmm. with me and was playing in the water. Now, I thought dogs didn't like water. I, I thought Cat. the one safe haven, it doesn't work. Cats don't like water. Dogs don't mind it. You know, they don't always love it, but if you in there, especially if it's a little baby dog, it's going to follow you around. I'm really interested to hear about this dog journey. I, I, I'm going to be loving these check-ins with you and these two puppies. These two puppies well, you're going to have in your house. Well, I said on The Breakfast Club that I was working on delivering the tea cappuccino style. I think these dogs are going to bring me down a little bit, you know, as I get into my golden years. By the way, you won't be seeing any golden because I'm going to get this hair dyed. But I'm I'm getting into my my older years now that I'm turning four, well, I'm 44 now. And I want to I want to be able to be a little bit more emotionally stable. So these are my emotional support children True. uh but no i you know look i'm excited i don't know what's gonna happen i gotta get the gucci and chanel instagram page popping so that way people can see them i gotta get the gucci collar and the chanel collar so i gotta i gotta figure out maybe drop an only fans to afford that but look um what have you been going on and i'm telling you right now i promise you before the end of the year i'm gonna get a um what is that ps5 i tell legend it's coming i it's coming i have to find it but it's coming he been asking. I'm like, look, it's coming maybe around Christmas. I keep pushing it off. I push it back yeah. a few months every time. But uh, I just been. I pushed it back a few months. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to give you some wiggle room. So I'm pushing it back to Christmas. And, and then his birthday's in January. So you got some cushion right there, right? Okay. We'll, but, get, it, we'll um, get it done. Recently, I think I've just been manifesting and planning for next year. I've been really looking it back. And seeing how much we've accomplished with Hollywood Unlocked, with the syndicated show, with the TV show, with the podcast, and really remembering like how I started my journey with Hollywood Unlocked. So these this past weekend, I really just been kind of looking at what the future is going to be. But I took some time and really like thought about everything we've accomplished, like how we how we even met Jason, those first few shows at the old studio, how the studio tried to hate on us, and you got your own studio, like. I was just going through all these processes because I feel like sometimes we don't slow down and just recognize our journey, right? And we've been through some funny shit. Like, if people we've really been, knew behind been, the scenes. through some co-host changes. Boy, I tell you, this is the, they say we're the Dusty's Child podcast. I understand it. But you know, it wasn't until Joe, it wasn't until Joe Budden's podcast changed that I realized that changing co-hosts is a big deal for the audience. Like the audience has to, embrace and accept this new change i think they've done a, we've done a great job of getting our our audience to stick around for the most part um it's funny that you bring up the journey because i remember the day we were at dash studios getting ready to start a show and they literally came in and said sign this contract or you have to go and we were literally kicked out the next day and had mm -hmm. to go find another studio in 24 hours we found that went to cash shout out to the folks calling and them over at cast studios but i'm also excited to announce that I'm launching my own podcast studios. Hollywood Unlocked That's Studios right. opens December 1st here in LA. It's really, really top line. I mean, we have ballet, we're gonna have a bar, snacks and all that, but we're gonna have three areas for people to record their own podcast. And this comes on the heels of me launching my, my, um, my courses to be able to help people become bloggers and podcasters so we can share the wealth. You know, the culture shouldn't belong to five or six people. It should belong to everybody who invests in it. And I'm excited that that's coming. And, I, and as you bring up, just, being able to slow down and take stock of all the work that we've done and the work that's ahead of us. I know that the next couple of days here, we're going to be sitting down and planning for and strategizing for 2022, because I've said that I want 2022 to be my biggest year yet and just continue to grow. So I'm glad that you brought that up because as that all rolls out, we hope that all of you continue to support Hollywood Unlocked and grow with Damage Blue and I and the show and the brand and become more innovative. Side note, I heard that. Power 106 here in Los Angeles is hiring a new morning show. It's not anything that we're going to be tuning into, but it's it's interesting over there because, you know, I always say when blessings aren't bestowed on you, you can't be mad. You almost got to be thankful that God kind of got that out your way so the bigger blessings can come. So uh, I have to say that I'm always grateful 
when I don't get things because it allows me to look up for the bigger blessing that I may be overlooking. And mm-hmm. so I'm excited for some new projects that are coming. But anyway, enough about us. Yes. Um, you know, I lost all this weight. I'm a polo <laughs> player. I show up to work with the hair halfway combed. And I yet have been called the sexiest anything. But guess what? People Magazine has now named their new sexiest man alive. And it was Paul Rudd. Now, if you don't know who Paul Rudd is, we're going to put a photo up. Now, this actor, everybody knows who is best for his roles in Ant-Man. And this is 40 and Clueless. Uh, He's now been deemed the sexiest man alive by People Magazine. Now, I don't know who they're questioning. I don't know if they're in line at Target or if they're somewhere in... I don't know, uh, Stevie Wonder's backyard, but this is not the sexiest man alive on earth right now. I don't understand how they're making these choices. Was Brad Pitt not available <laughs> to just throw it to him? A Chet Hanks, give it to, I mean, anybody at this point could have got it, but Paul Rudd, you're a good actor. You're funny. Uh, and you have nice brownish hair, but you're not the sexiest man alive. He actually said that uh, uh, <laughs> some will be surprised by him receiving it, saying, quote, I do have an awareness enough to know that when people hear that I will be picked for this, they would say, what? This is not false humility. <laughs> there are so many people that should get this before me. See, that's why I like him. So you're the cutest man alive, you, just because you know you shouldn't have won the sexiest man alive. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's probably some marketing. When does Ant-Man come back out? You know, because I haven't heard of Ant-Man, which was actually a good movie. I thought that was going to be a very stupid movie. It's actually really good. And that must be about to come back out. And then I did some research because I'm like, like you said, who picks this thing? And I was like, did they get it right the past few years? So the year before this one was Michael B. Jordan. I believe before that was, um, what's this, John Legend. And before that was John Legend. Idris. John Legend came on the show the day he got it and he know he shouldn't have got it too. And everybody told him he shouldn't have got it. <laughs> So wait, wait, you said John, John, you don't consider him one of the sexiest men alive? Absolutely not. Now, Drake could have got it. I think Drake could have got sexiest man alive. I mean, because he's commercially acceptable. He's hot right now. He's fly. But I, I don't think he fits their demographic. You know what I mean? I, I don't know. I, I don't. I mean, uh, Bad Bunny could have got it. I think he's ah. sexy. I don't know. There's just other sexier guys. Damage. I don't know. I, I think this was a I think this was a donation. When you when you see when you see Paul Rudd, you don't think sexy. It, it don't it don't hit you in the chest. I think bus driver at best. Oh, you know what I was gonna say too. Um, yeah, you shouldn't have got it, Paul. But thank you so much for knowing that you shouldn't have got it because uh, I think that there are other people. You know what, Lisa Bonet's husband, what's his name? Jason Momoa. Jason Momoa could have got it. Lenny Kravitz, they could have did a throwback on him. I mean, there's just so many people. Um, a valet driver. I, I just don't think that he should have got it. Uh, you know but nonetheless, what? he got it. I, this is a big question. When you put the category of sexy, right, what are the characteristics of sexy? What makes it different from handsome, right? Because I'm sure somebody thinks Paul Rudd is handsome. But when you say sexy is man alive, what are some of those characteristics, Jason? When you well, look at this a guy. Is not, this is not the handsomest man alive. <laughs> this is the sexiest man alive. So you what's know, some of those think, characteristics? I think that... Um, uh, Chris Hemsworth would have been good. Chris Pratt even could have been better. Um, I just think there's just so many people that are deemed sexy. Like people online, if you put a hot or not, we've never done a hot or night for hot or not for Paul Rudd. We never will. It would, nobody would like it. It would be not, 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 not. But I think that they could have given it to somebody that they know would have qualified. Um, and, uh, I, you know, it, it's interesting because when you're white, you have to work less harder for the things that we have to, we have to fight. John Legend had to fight tooth and nail <laughs> to get that honor. Okay. And there'd be an I, EGOT winner. <laughs> I mean, he had to be an EGOT winner. Why, they could have gave this to, I mean, if they would have gave it to Jay-Z. Ah. Nah, nah, he, he, he didn't deserve it. But at least if he would have got it, <laughs> Beyonce would have reposted it and they would have got more bang for their investment. You know what I mean? Like, you you like I would have shot Jay Z Basquiat style because you know he got all the hair going on. Colin Kaepernick could have got sexiest man alive. He has a new documentary out that is triggering as fuck. Uh, by the way, speaking of Jay Z and movies, the harder they fall. If you have not watched it, this is my one time giving free promo. It is so good. I text Regina King that she I don't even watch a lot of movies like that, but she acted her ass off. It was such a good movie. Have you seen it yet? 
Yeah, man. Talk about black excellence. Who was it in the movie, Jason? I'm not a, a, a big guy knowing all the people's names, but I knew about five names by heart in that movie. We had Idris Elba, Lakeith Stanfield, uh, Regina, uh, yeah. Regina, and then that's where I fall off. But I know these people. No, you had Regina King. You know, but what I loved about it is that they had a lot of people that we didn't know in the movie mm -hmm. uh, that we that we you know knew people who actually acted their asses off, and they did a shout out and paid homage to Chadwick Boseman on the train, which I didn't even realize. They killed so many white people in this movie. And um, yeah, all the black people died, but they didn't die in the first scene. They died towards the end, which, you know, again, you have to go and watch the movie. I didn't ruin it. I did not say who died. I said a lot of people died. But the movie white opens people. up in a jaw-dropping way. You have to go watch it. I loved it. I'm mad I didn't go to the premiere, because the premiere was lit too. Well, listen, something else that died is uh, Stevie J and Faith Evans' marriage, potentially. Now, I love Faith Evans, my favorite artist. You know, she's been on the show. I've done things with her. But Stevie J is actually calling it quits with Faith. They've been married for three years. He's filed court documents here in L.A. saying that he wants to get out. Now, they married back in July of 2018. And, and this was in Vegas. Remember, she left her child at home. A lot of people didn't know where Faith had gone. She just kind of jumped the broom and left and shocked friends and family. Some of her friendships have fallen out. That's what I heard on the streets. Uh, by talking to some of her former friends. Faith is literally one of my favorite people. Now, a lot of fans were very critical of Faith at the time because remember, Stevie J was, I believe, the godfather to one of her kids and was around mm. at the time that Biggie was around when she was married to Biggie and they had a close relationship. Now, in white people world, it don't matter because that's what white people do anyway. I mean, the girl, Naya Rivera, died and her sister moved in with her baby dad. Her baby dad moved in with the sister. So, they, they white people been doing it for us. We just we don't you know we we play a little different by the rules. But uh, back in uh, back in 2018 when they got together, everybody online had something to say. They thought that Stevie J was an opportunist. Faith Evans ended up making it onto Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, which we never thought we would see Faith Evans uh, on Love and Hip Hop. And uh, some of her friends told me it had to be the dick that she was dickmatized. He had a big old thing and he put it on her, and you know that's what happens. Uh, and so. Even after all of that with the marriage in 2020, Faith was taken into custody for domestic violence after they said that she allegedly had attacked Stevie. So the case got dropped and we never heard anything. But now it's over. And I won't lie, I'm, I'm very sad for Faith, but I'm very happy that she's now going to be able to focus on Faith. Yeah, I think when we seen that headline, when we see them two come together, I'm going to just say speak for myself. I knew that wasn't going to last that long. Um I'm glad it did last three years. Salute to them. But that just seemed like toxic was written all over it. I, I was afraid. Stevie J and Faith. I, I do feel like I don't know what the, the alliance of Stevie J is to big. I don't know how close they were. I don't know how apart they were. But, you know, you said he was the godfather, one of the kids. I don't know. Uh, I wish them both the best. I didn't see this working out. And I don't want to say I predicted this. But look, I think we all was kind of like, that's not going to last that long. Yeah, I mean, do we expect any relationship that Stevie J is in to work? I mean, <laughs> the choices, right? Um, side note, and ironically, I just ran into Mimi, his ex-girl uh, who's from Love & Hip Hop, with her girlfriend, Ty, in Aruba. Mm -hmm. We were on the same plane together, and it's so funny when I run into celebrities who are on some sneaky link shit, they always get nervous with me. And I say, hey, Ty. And then, and then Mimi turned around, and then we ended up running into them at a bar, and I sent them bottles in Aruba, but... Uh, I told them that I would not out them until they were ready. The next day they posted and I was able to share. But shout out to them because Mimi is very happy and I love her and Ty together. And, it, you know, it just seems like Stevie can't really keep anything together, whether it's a work relationship, a relationship with a woman, a relationship with a show. Um, I hope that they figure it out. Now, a lot of people in the streets were saying that drugs may have been involved in their relationship and I have not been close enough mm. to them to see it. I did hire Faith to perform at Hollywood Unlock Live sometime before COVID and she looked healthy, they looked healthy, but you know, a lot of people have been talking and there's been whispers. So I hope that drugs is not involved and I hope that Faith is happy. Ultimately, I want her to be happy and I want Stevie J to be happy. So maybe we'll catch yeah. up with one of them and find out. I, I mean, well, look at it this way, Jason. Maybe this is a good thing for Faith because it seemed like everybody get with Stevie J, find happiness right after. Look at Jocelyn. You just said Mimi. Eve looks like she's doing amazing. So maybe this is like a stepping oh stone. God. I forgot about Eve. They had that sex. <laughs> but maybe this is a stepping stone for happiness for Faith. I want Stevie J to be happy too, man. But you know, yeah. maybe this is what people need to do. It's like, ah, once they hit Stevie J, they learn some lessons and they go on and take off, have some trajectory. 
in their relationship life and it's you know in their personal life well maybe stevie j needs to come to my community you know play around over here for a little bit you know one thing for sure it's gonna be a, it's gonna be some new energy okay or, or maybe not no. i don't know <laughs> All right, look, speaking of uh, Love and Hip Hop Atlanta and all things in Atlanta, over in Georgia County, there's a judge that's doing some shady shit. He's banning elves on the shelf, tradition citing emotion, emotional health risk for children. So a judge has said uh, and ordered asking the ban of Elf on the Shelf, a toy that reports the actions of children to Santa Claus before Christmas. Now, this judge, his name is Robert Leonard, confirmed that the banishment on his official, he, he confirmed the banishment of uh, on his official Twitter page and said that the tradition affects the emotional health and well-being of children. Here's what he said on Twitter. He said, tired of living in elf on the shelf tyranny, not looking forward to the elf for getting to move and causing your kids emotional distress. I am a public servant and will take the heat for you. My gift to tired parents. P.S. If you love your elf, keep your elf. No contempt. Hmm. They ain't got nothing to do over there in Georgia. You worried about Elf on the Shelf? <laughs> it's so what much about shit Tiny you can... and T.I.'s basement? Can we go focus on things that still have not been cleared up? Wait, wait. Well, when the spirit of Christmas, um, I, I understand, you know, having a stressed kid makes nobody happy. It's like having a stressed wife is first and having a stressed kid. Nobody want to deal with that. Um, I guess if Elf on the Shelf is causing that much uproar, it takes somebody to step in and do that. I just feel like there's so many things that um, he could be using his power for to create change, especially in today's time. Um, but you know, I guess Elf on the Shelf was on the top of his to-do list. The Thanks, damage. Man. I'm damaged. I don't know if it's because I was born in the hood. We never had an elf. We didn't even have a shelf. I don't understand why this is such a big problem. Elf on the Shelf, it has this many people distraught. Now, he tweeted this as a joke, but the idea pissed off so many parents who thought that it was actually going to happen. And they went off on this man. And so he said he came up with the idea who grew tired of, uh, uh, for parents who grew tired of the tradition. I can't even remember the tradition of Christmas in my house. I think it was, are the lights still on? That was the tradition. Like, let's just wake up and see if Santa brought the elves. I do remember my mom used to get cookies and milk and leave it out for Santa and the reindeers. I never understood who was going to pour the milk in the reindeer's mouth because they don't have hands. It was the dumbest shit my mom came up with. But, you know, nonetheless, I used to lay out the little cookies and I knew her ass was in there eating shit she shouldn't have been eating. You know what I mean? <laughs> because who eats the cookies? Unless she had a nigga come over, eat my cookies. And then that's a whole other conversation. But I was, you know, I was I was in my room. I didn't know what was going on. Did you have a yeah. tradition as a kid? I was the kid that stayed up. I used to watch my mom put the gifts under there. She she was a little, my mom was older. I was adopted, so she wasn't up to three in the morning trying to sneak the gifts in. About 11.30 at night, she was putting the gifts under there. I seen her do it. You know what I mean? I, we left the cookies out. I seen her eat it. That ruined it real quick for me. Like, it didn't last that long. I'm about seven years old when I watched my mom at 11.30 at night put the gifts under there. I'm like, you could at least wait until I was asleep. I'm still up, mom. <laughs> I'm right yeah. here. If I was her next year, I'd have just threw him in your room and just went to bed. Like I just threw him. They just threw him. Just <laughs> she gifts tried. flying everywhere. But you know, kids will ruin traditions because at the end of the day, you know, in, the inquisitive, inquisitive, inquisitiveness of kids is unrelenting. We want to know everything, and then we don't want to know when we find out stuff. Let me tell you some fun, something funny. This week, I went to go see Tiana Taylor perform, and I brought my friends. And her little daughter, Junie, is so grown. She walked up to one of my friends and she said, hi, what part of the show did you like the most? And my friend oh. says, uh, the last song. And she goes, huh, you're lying. I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? But, you know, kids, you know, kids are there not to be played with. I remember as a kid. Uh, my mother used to hire a Santa Claus too. Uh, and this was before she got into drugs. She would hire a Santa Claus to come to the house with a bunch of gifts. And, you know, my, my friends from the neighborhood would come over and we had good times, you know, and before the times got bad. But, you know, I, I, I do get emotional around the holidays when I see families that don't have much because, you know, when you mm -hmm. start to gain more blessings, you start to think about the t people who are, who are losing them or don't have them. And I just wish... You know, I know at some point in my life, I want to be in a place where I could do so much more for kids who don't have anything, even if it's just 
you know, sponsoring families or partnering with companies to donate stuff. But if there's any companies out there that ever hear this message or anybody out there that works for a company that hears this, Jason Lee and Hollywood Unlocked wants to do stuff around the holidays for the less fortunate. So please reach out to us. Uh, I'm here. You can go to info at Hollywood, hollywoodunlocked.com. You can go to our Instagram, our emails there, but make sure you, you let us know. Um, what's the best gift you ever got for Christmas damage? Damn. Uh, I got Dreamcast one time, a long time ago. Christmas stopped real quick for me. But you reminded me of something. When you talk about kids say crazy things, I had an uncle, right? And every day, I swear my uncle was the biggest player I've ever seen to this day. He had a different woman come to the back room of his sister's house. So he lived with his sister. I'm talking about Asian women, Muslim women, uh, Indian women, like all types of women. Jason, I'm talking about every day he had a different woman. And I was like, but what this were they can't doing? be possible. You know what they're doing in the back room, Jason. <laughs> you know oh, he, he had just, so, was he, he, he was just knocking all these women down? Knocking them. He's a legend. So get this. He finally finds a, 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 a girlfriend, right? Somebody I guess he's serious about. But I don't know. I'm like nine years old. So he introduces me to her. He's like, hey, Abdul. I want you to meet my girlfriend. And you know what my dumb ass say? What? You know what I said, Jason? I said, damn. I said, damn, another one? (laughs) And she looked at him, and I ain't seen her since. He's still mad at me about this to this day, Jason. To this day. I'm 32 years old. Yeah. When I have a kid, I'm sending it directly to boarding school. You know, it's something about these puppies and these little kids. They don't give a shit. They just do whatever they want, wherever they want, and they don't care about the consequences. But, you know, relationships can be uh, mended by this next story, Demi Lovato. You know, they have their own $79 Mm -hmm. vibrator, and she says, we are all deserving of orgasms. Now, this is really interesting. Demi, I... Who is managing Demi Lovato at this point? They need to take her. They need whoever managed Britney Spears needs to go and manage Demi Lovato. I know that's controversial, given that the people that managed Britney were her parents. They ruined her life. But that's at this point, Demi Lovato's life is off track. She's getting into the adult toy business, and and they took to their Instagram to announce the creation of their own vibrator called the Demi Wand. Now Demi is saying that she created this to help take away the stigma. Of pleasure, the mm. stigma away from pleasure. Anyway, she said that they said that there is nothing more than empowering. Let me slow down before I get these pronouns wrong. They said there is nothing more empowering than taking your own pleasure into your own hands. We have spent far too long pretending we are not sexual beings. It is time for us to put this segment stigma to rest. Now, when she says we, is she saying women? Do we know what she talking about? Who is we? When she say we, because they ain't everything, they got to be something. So when she says we have all, who are you talking about, Demi? You have confused this audience. We don't know who you are selling it for because they may not be us. So if you're selling it to them, you need to tell us that it ain't for us because y'all want to have it. You know what I mean? But she said we all deserve orgasms. I've had two orgasms today. I'm fine. So that ain't for them. No, they. Now, that's for y'all. You know, <laughs> so the vibrator is seventy nine dollars, and it's marketed the whisperer quiet, and it, it's being marketed as whisper quiet and definitely roommate approved. Now, does it take the stigma away just because it's quiet? Like, if you like, should you own it? Shouldn't it be louder if you're trying to take the stigma away? Shouldn't people know that you're pleasuring yourself? Because ain't nothing wrong with that. So why it make takes, a silent? It one? takes the stigma away because now. Their vibrator is not judgmental because regardless of the pronoun of the person using it, it is for them. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. All right. Meaning like if it's a dildo, is it a dildo? So it's a dildo, meaning you could stick it up your ass if you're a guy. There's no stigma. You could stick it up your vagina if you're a girl. But if you're a girl who says you're him, and if you're a him who says you're a she or they, it's available to all. I support it. I don't know what's going on, but I support it. Well, I bought a dildo. I haven't even used it because I forgot who I bought it for, but it's in my room. My housekeeper at this point, she's just she just comes to work and puts things in the corner and goes home. She she don't know what's going on. Uh well, um, if I was going to go into the sex toy industry though, oh, oh, I am. 
I forgot. I'm getting ready to start selling hoe bags here at Hollywood Unlocked. I'm actually selling a hoe bag. You know, like when you go to somebody's house to have sex, you want to grab your bag. Well, now you grab your bag, your condoms, your lubricant, everything will be in it. And it's literally okay. the hoe bag. So once that's for sale, yeah, you can uh, you can use it. That's that's a good idea. Now, so you said what's gonna be? It's gonna be condoms. We gonna what you gonna have? Chapstick. What else is in there? What's in the whole bag? Well, there's not any chapstick. If you need chapstick, you probably shouldn't put your lips on anything at this point. Like lick them, put some. You know what's so crazy? Somebody last week we were talking about sex. They were talking about yeah, you know, I got my Vaseline. I go Vaseline. I haven't used Vaseline since I was 18. Vaseline. Come really, Vaseline to me is when. You were like, I don't know what the fuck you was doing with Vaseline. If you went, put, <laughs> I do remember the days that you would get the Vaseline and put it on the tip of your dick. But that's when you was fucking and you didn't know what you was doing. And you didn't care if you was going to tear somebody's insides out. You cannot use Vaseline. You definitely need to have something a little bit more wet, a little bit more slippery. You know, this water like base. it get hot once it start rubbing. <laughs> <Yo>. <laughs> well, Vaseline. you got to be careful with these lubricants because I'm telling you, I use some wet, some uh, water based lubricant on my new sheets. That shit was running all in between my fingers, dripping on my sheets. I was stressed <laughs> out over my bedding. Uh, so you do have to be careful. The whole bag, I don't know what kind of what, what we got so far. It's just a whole bag. It's whatever you can use it and have a good time. But you know, shout out to you, Demi. Uh, y'all have fun with that. All right, look, uh, another songstress in the news is Chili. Now, I love Chili so much, but she says something that's coming off really crazy. Now, she says that race shouldn't matter in the jury selection for trial for the men that were accused of killing Ahmaud Arbery. Now, remember, that's the guy who was jogging and the people hunted him down like an animal shot and killed him. So a judge recently ruled that he'll seat one black juror and 11 white people. To, the, uh, to decide whether or not these people go to prison for the rest of their life. Now, we all say that trials are a jury of your peers. But I also think that, you know, even though they're two white men or three white men on trial, I can't remember if it's two or three, but, you know, let it reflect the situation, like who, the peers of the deceased and the peers of the killers. Now, TLC's Chili has now weighed in, and she said that it shouldn't matter. She was just asked to share her take on it and she said, quote, just because it's not the same skiller doesn't mean that they wouldn't be fair. This is what she said. Take a look. And uh, the official jury, 11 white people mm -hmm. and one black man. And people are like, yo, how is that I, fair? I, no, I look at it like this. I mean, we have to believe that there are kind, good-hearted people out there no matter what color they are. Right. So I would say let's look at it like that. You know what I mean? Just because it's not the same skin color doesn't mean that they wouldn't be fair to see. Because to me, it's pretty obvious right. what happened. Right. You know, and we would just pray and hope that they would see the same thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it would, you, you think like what this jury does is a reflection of like of society's like what the way like even without without black more black faces, you think uh -huh. you think it can be fair? You, I mean. We just we have to hope and pray that it is. Right. That's all we can do. Right. You know what I'm saying? Just hope and pray that the people that that, that were chosen would be fair. You know, and just be honest about it, and not to be one sided. Yeah. Now we mm. love you, Chili. We know you're a Christian, and your hopes and prayers probably reach heaven faster than mine. But at this point, do we want hopes and prayers, or do we want justice? I think we want justice. You know, race is an issue. It's a central issue of this case and many cases like this. Um, and now we want to know if Greg and his son, Travis, are going to go to prison for the rest of their life. I personally want to see them locked up. Like she did say, and I'll credit to her, she said we all saw it and we know what it was. We know that it was murder. We know they hunted him down and stopped him from moving and then shot and killed him. And his mother has you know, been strong and a big advocate for justice. But I think, Chili, I, I love you and I know where you're coming from, but I think you missed mm -hmm. the mark on this one. I think it was just a little... Um, tone deaf for what the rest of the world is saying right now. Yeah, I, I think our heart's in the right place. Uh, I see what she's saying. She's trying to make the best of the situation. She's, be, she's being optimistic. But I'm actually happy that she spoke on it, period, because honestly, I feel like that case has gotten very quiet. Like, thank God somebody like Chili spoke on it so we can have this dialogue here because we need, all of us need to be way more involved in what's happening with this case. Like everything moving forward, I want everybody to be dialed in and have that same energy for everything that's happening. Let's not go and just attack Chili for being, you know, the sweethearted person she's always been. 
like I feel like we took our foot off the gas on a lot of these issues that we're having, a lot of these cases that are going on. I feel like we need to come back together and make our voices be heard to make sure justice is served. We need to see it to the end. So, you know, salute to Chile. I don't all the way agree with her sentiment, but I understand it. But I'm with you. I, I'm, I'm with justice. If we need to uh, find more jurors, better jurors, then we need to do that. But justice must be served. Yeah, well, I, I think that, you know, uh, this brings up the issue that we're having at Instagram. Our Instagram has been shadow banned for two weeks, and this is why we want yes. our, our community to be outraged. You know, I've been emailing the heads of Instagram and recently just this morning emailed the CEO of Instagram who was locked out of his account because somebody said he was dead that, you know, they need to figure things out over there. I think at this point we need to create a cultural conversation around the power of social media uh, 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 siphoning the black voice. I think that stakeholders need to know what's happening. Um, and I did tell Instagram today that I am thinking about how I can create a community conversation of people of color to talk about this. And I've, I've reached out to some pretty big names. And, you know, I just think that it's, it's, it's a shame how whether you're a black man jogging in your community, whether you're a black entrepreneur who lives online, whether you're, mm -hmm. you know, somebody trying to get into Harvard or a, an elite school like that, race matters and i think we forget that it matters and black lives matter i know that we we we're all fired up around moments but this has to be a continual moment until we get what we deserve kamala harris where are you you have literally disappeared you were the most i need the black vote i need the black vote person i know and then you got it and then where are you at you know you should be leading the fight for uh equality mm -hmm. you know i would love to see kamala harris go to the 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 uh, colin kaepernick uh, documentary uh, uh, launch, a uh, premiere part, premiere, walk the carpet as the black vice president. Like, let the world hear how amazing it is to have conversations like that. But there's so many politics around, you know, football and sports and money and this and that, that, you know, we will never see that. And, you know, I don't know. I feel like if I was a politician in that office and I had that kind of power, I would take race on day one. Because there's so many reparations, all of us. I mean, there should be a trillion dollar fund put together just for black entrepreneurs. So that way we can reap some benefits of the country we built that was taken from us. Right. So it's interesting to see all of this happening. Uh, I'm going to continue to fight my fight. I'm losing lots of opportunities doing it, but I'm gaining a lot of respect and self-respect by standing my ground. <clears throat> yeah, Jason, I'm not going to lie. I'm afraid like uh, a lot of people showed up at the polls to vote for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. And I feel like their disappearance um, is really going to impact the next election because I feel like people are really feeling like they were abandoned. And I don't know if they're going to show up at the polls again. You know, it was hard enough getting a lot of black people to vote. And I think this example, it sets a bad example. And I hope everybody out here don't take that that way. But at the same time, it's hard to convince them not where so many years before they vote felt like they, it didn't matter. And now you get here where people fight to for now to get certain people in office and we're seeing nothing. Like I haven't heard of anything from Kamala in a while. And maybe I'm naive. I know I don't follow um, the political world that closely, but I would love to see Kamala show up for our people like we showed up for her at those polls. It really help us. You know, I feel like it's only right. That's why we put you in office. Yeah. Meanwhile, shout out to the Colin, the family of Colin Powell. You know, he died recently and they had his funeral. I actually watched the funeral. It was good to see Michelle and Barack again and the, our former presidents come back together. Trump wasn't there. But Colin Powell, you know, I almost tweeted how many black people are watching this right now because you don't understand the significance of what this man uh, played. He was the first black secretary of state, the uh, first black person to lead all our armed forces. He was somebody who could have become president, but his wife wanted him to preserve his health and his peace for their family's sake. You know, he was um, very much a, a, a very important voice for our culture and our community. And even though he was Republican, when it came time to stand with Trump, he did. And actually, he was very vocal against Trump in those policies. He stood for what was right. And he had a lot of integrity. I felt like they, they, his, his funeral was really um, an indication of how much respect he had in this country. It was good to see Hillary Clinton, a lot of those people. One question I thought of, though, seeing Hillary Clinton was, do you think we would have had COVID? affect our world or impact us in a way that it has had she been elected president at the time. I know a lot of people are not fans of Hillary Clinton, but at least she would have known what to do in terms of listening to intelligence, 
putting some control and some arms around a situation that was growing out of control. She knew how to access resources, but more important, she was open to ideas from other people, whereas Trump was shutting them down, allowing the borders to stay open longer than uh, he probably should have, and just not not being, uh, not even acknowledging that there was a problem. So I'm wondering, would we have been able to, you know, gotten through COVID had Hillary been there or not? That's what people say. You know, it's all the theories, all of what if. I'm scared that how things are going today, that Donald Trump is going to feel empowered to run again in the next few years and feel like he's going to be able to win. Because a lot of people are saying, I told you so with uh, old Joe Biden there. A lot of people saying, I told you so. And I hope that don't turn into a reelection of Donald Trump. Would you be, how would you feel if Donald Trump was hired again? I mean, reelected. I mean, am I a Trump supporter? No. Now, I will say he did do a lot for business owners, even though a lot of us messed up the PPP thing. He did provide resources (laughs) to help a lot of businesses make it and and provide opportunities. Um, I just don't think he reflects the moral fiber that I have for humanity. You know, I don't think labeling Muslims terrorists or building walls to keep Mexicans out or doing things to make gay gay and transgender people feel like they're less American. I don't think any of trying to undermine policies that were created to support the inclusion of uh, marginalized groups of people. No, I don't support th- those policies. But in many ways, I think Biden is, he's just not here. Like, I don't know what he's doing. I don't know what they're doing. They're not, I, I really feel like there was an opportunity to bring cultural voices to the table to say, what, how can we get the message of what we're going to do out? I know me, Charlemagne, a lot of us would love to be at the White House understanding more of how we can get out information of resources to our people. You know, I've never thought of reaching out to them. Maybe we should. I don't know. But I just feel like there's just so much opportunity that's being missed here. And it's unfortunate because when that term is up, because it's going to run its course and you come knocking on my door, you already know that if you came to somebody's mm-hmm. house and you took from them and you didn't bring it back, you're not getting it again. So we already know how hard it was to get them in office this time. I don't know that they'll have an easy victory the next time. And, and the problem is, Trump set the bar for communication from the president. He was ta- he spoke on every topic. He was always on the TV. And now we have Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, and we don't hear anything. And the problem is we know it's possible to do so. Now, I'm not saying that Trump wasn't neglecting a whole bunch of things to do so, but there's a lot of issues going on. And a lot of these issues are what we elected you guys for. And we hear nothing. What happened to the things when it comes to student loan debt. What happened to this? What happened to that? There's a lot of people wanting to just hear the voice. Even if you can't create immediate change, we're not hearing anything. And I feel like it's going to cause, it's going to cause a shitstorm when it comes to re-election time. Remember, um, Biden is the guy who said that if you vote for Trump, you're not black. Yeah. So if you vote for Biden, what are you? Because black folks, (laughs) our issues aren't being dealt with. So uh, anyway... Anyway, listen, um, Damage was good seeing you. Blue, we hope you get better. Y'all, listen, yes. 2022, 2022 is upon us. I have to say I'm so excited that um, I'm going to be bringing back, we're going to be bringing back in-person interviews at Hollywood Unlocked. I mean, I think hey. that this green screen thing has been great, and we still are going to do a version of it when we need to, I guess, for you know interviews where we have to do the online thing for people who can't get in. But, you know, there's just something to be said about being in person, that energy, that uh, that transfer of, of information and energy. So, yeah, I'm excited to bring that back, and I can't wait to show folks the new space. So keep staying locked in with us, man, and keep sharing the podcast and make sure that we continue to grow. Damage, I'm going to see you out uh, later, right? That's right. Till next time, y'all. We love y'all. All All right, y'all. Peace. All right, look, that was a great show. And make sure you keep coming back because we got all types of amazing interviews and topics that are going to make you go crazy. Uh Uh-huh, that's right. That means like, subscribe, do everything you need to do to make sure you stay up to date with what we got going on. And ladies, stay tuned in because you know I have your back. And listen, make sure that you're commenting below because even though I say I don't read it on the show, that's all I do when it's over. Peace.